Cam is back. Julian, you're back. My first question to you, sir, are the Panthers back? Nick Carboni, the Carolina Panthers, they are back. Cam Newton's back. I am so excited. Five and five has never felt better than this feels right now. The Carolina Panthers getting a resounding victory over what was the best team record-wise in the NFL by going on the road and smacking around the Arizona Cardinals in Cam Newton's debut back here in Carolina for his second act. And everyone around the city has to be excited. You've seen all of the excitement and the response to the Carolina Panthers bring back Cam, something that I joked about and never thought would ever happen. All, like last week, I tweeted out that there's no way this is going to happen. Everyone needs to move on. Cam Newton's not going to be a Carolina Panther again. What do I know? He's a Carolina Panther about 48 hours after that, and the vibes are great here in Charlotte. And looking at the rest of the season, the Carolina Panthers certainly feel like a team that's going to have something to say when it comes to the wild card and the NFC playoff race. So Cam was certainly productive in that limited package they put him in, and they did a really good job executing to the point where they could put him in those situations early. But what are your expectations from a 32-year-old Cam who hasn't played all year until now going forward as the starting quarterback taking all the snaps for Carolina? I honestly don't know right now. It's hard because he hasn't played all season. He looked good in the preseason at times, and then he hasn't played until this week. And he's still trying to learn the playbook. I do like that he was ready physically in the Carolina Panthers. i got to give a lot of credit to Joe Brady and to Sean Ryan, the OC, and the quarterback coach here in Carolina, respectively, for finding a role for Cam today in Arizona. They could have easily just had him been inactive and then waited to catch him up next week. But instead, they're like, no, let's hit the ground running. Let's get him out there. And you can see the energy that he brought just shows you how it's a brand new season here in Carolina with Cam Newton. So moving forward, I would expect him to start. I understand that Matt Rule is just trying to enjoy the win right now and doesn't want to talk about that, but they're not paying Cam Newton $6 million guaranteed and potentially $10 million a season. Mind you, more than what Sam Darnold was getting paid this year to be the starting quarterback to come in here and not to start on Sunday against Washington. What will he look like? I'm not sure what you know in short yardage situations like we saw uh, today with his First two touches, the run and then the throw to Robbie Anderson, that he will be a threat in the red zone. That seems to be a problem that's been fixed now. Joe Brady, we had talked about him and the red zone issues of the Carolina Panthers the last two seasons. That might be gone now, Cam Newton. Timing-wise, you saw in that slant, threw it behind DJ Moore, even a deep ball he threw to DJ Moore that ended up being a pass interference on the defense. He's just not there yet with his receivers, but I'm sure moving throughout the rest of the week, he'll get caught up and we'll see more of a traditional offense that we saw back in the past Carolina with, with Cam Newton and then a little bit of wrinkles with Joe Brady trying to sprinkle some of that in here. So I'm excited to see what he looks like on Sunday against Washington, but also just very excited to see what he was able to do today in his debut back here as a Carolina Panther. Julian, it seems like the mark in the NFC to get to the playoffs is eight, probably nine wins. They still went on the road to start out Cam Newton's second tenure. Is yeah. this a team that should be pushing for the playoffs in late December, early January? Yes, certainly. And you talk about getting to eight wins, eight and nine. That could happen in the next three weeks. You have Washington at home. I understand they beat Tampa today, but Taylor Heineke, fine player, solid backup, going up against this defense. What we've seen, what they've done to rookies. And Heineke's obviously not a rookie. He's played in the league. He has experience. He's looked good at times. But today, Colt McCoy, backup, looked great against San Francisco last week. Did not look good today as he got injured and had to leave the game there in the third quarter. I don't expect Taylor Heineke to have a ton of success against this defense, the second-best defense in the NFL right now. Then they have Miami on the road, whether it's Jacoby Brissett or Tua Tungabailoa. The Dolphins are a bad team this year. That feasibly should be another win for Carolina. And then they have the bye and then the Falcons team, who just got the doors blown off of them today. So you would think... That's three wins right there. Eight and five seems very realistic heading into the final four weeks where you're going to have a tough game on a Saturday evening against Buffalo. Then you get Tampa twice, and then you have New Orleans in the Superdome, and they don't have Jameis the rest of the year. Trevor Simeon was able to get them to come back in the game where they still lost on the road against the Titans. Yeah, firmly, I think this team's not playing for the seventh seed. They're playing for the sixth seed. I think it's between them and New Orleans when it comes to the sixth seed and the NFC. Let the Seahawks and the, the – Washington football team, the Vikings, whoever else, let them fight over the seventh seed. I think they should be battling with uh, New Orleans for the sixth seed. So absolutely, this team should have a firm like view on the playoffs moving forward. Okay, Julian, you know, you kind of mentioned it there, but the next three quarterbacks Carolina's defense faces, Heineke, as you mentioned, and Miami, yeah. whatever's going on there, Tua or Brissett, and then Matt Ryan. This defense is getting healthier. It seems like they're getting better too right now. Um, it certainly helps when you're not out there on the field for 40 minutes a game like it felt like for that period of time 
where they lost five to six and the offense couldn't move the football. And today, unlike last week, gets two stops in territory of the Cardinals territory. The offense goes down there and catches no two touchdowns. Maybe they're getting better. I mean, you add to Stephon Gilmore. You now have Shaq Thompson back healthy. CJ Henderson was out there hitting guys today. Dante Jackson, who loves to play in the desert. They're more comfortable. They're a year and a half into this scheme with some new players and more talent, a bunch of first, second rounders running all over this defense. It's no surprise just how good that they are, and especially when you add the energy of Cam Newton on that sideline and having more confidence in the offense's ability to go out there and to move the football and to actually have some complimentary football, which I had not seen over the last month or so. Yeah, this defense looks great so far, and they're certainly going to be capable of carrying them over the next couple weeks as Cam starts getting more comfortable in this offense as he's preparing the final four weeks against Buffalo, uh, Tampa, and New Orleans, like I mentioned earlier. This much maligned offensive line, uh, the common denominator maybe was Sam Darnold. P.J. Walker looked clean in the pocket. Uh, yeah. They ran the ball well. What's going on there? Is that just part of the energy lift that Cam brings back, or is it something else? I don't know. <laughs> they started their seventh offensive line combination of the, of the season in their, in their game 10 with Trent Scott back there at right guard. Of course, they're remote in the steady at right tackle. You got Pat Elfline at center, and they had the weird first play of the game, a center exchange with P.J. Walker, but that got cleaned up, and he played well for the most part. Michael Jordan might be the long-term fit there at left guard, and then at left tackle, you got Dennis Daly, who played well today. I, I don't really know what it is. Sam Darnold, one of the criticisms of him was he was holding on to the football too long. We did not see that today, whether it was Cam out there for the handful of plays that he had or P.J. Walker, and yet another game where they didn't give up a sack, and it was absolutely their best performance of the year against a very good Cardinals defensive front to be able to not give up really any pressures, give up no sacks. Got to give a lot of credit to those guys for being able to get together and to figure things out, and I don't know, maybe they're just trying to block harder. I, I don't know, but I give them a lot of credit for the way that they played, although it is one of those things moving forward. It still is a patchwork offensive line unit, and we'll see how they look moving forward when they do play some of the better teams in the final couple weeks of the season. Julian, I need you to rest up, my man, because we got a big Sunday on tap next week. Not a lot of storylines yes. with Washington coming to town, right? No, I mean, just a guy named Ron Rivera is there, then Marty Herney, Heineke, Kyle Allen, remember him? And, Joey oh, Sly? Yeah, Joey Sly, Re Joey Sly revenge game? Hope not, <laughs> but he will be back here in Charlotte. All right, he's back. We'll be back then, too.